unmuting the mics first step for a live Woo, stream. We did, <laughs> we did it. it. All right. And we are speeding in to the um, stream. Um, okay. I said I'd do it. <laughs> to bring you um, today's research rally, which is three, two, one, start your search engines. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we are taking a lap around the Primo search engine, searching the library, just making sure that as students are still finding resources that like you really know, okay, all those tools in the search engine that help you really figure out like is there something that you can use that you can get your hands on or get on your computer for that paper assignment or project? Right, Ross? Right. Yeah. So we're going to take a look at all of these different ways you can, you know, play with your searches and, and really drill down to like exactly what you're looking for here. Yeah. So, um, no. and we're not going to yeah. go, we're not going to go too crazy deep. We're really like, we just want to make sure, because Ross, you said the other day, that you still have students that um, are just like literally preparing to write a paper or do a project, right? Absolutely, yeah. I work with a lot of online classes and we're just now, most of the classes I work with are just now starting to get into the point where they have to start thinking about their research projects and, you know, kind of getting started on developing their topics and all. Okay. Mm. So Ross, um, recently, Anna, speaking to that, you um, met with the student that needed, um, what did they need? What was the student yeah, asking so, you for? Yeah, one of the things I wanted to, to kind of talk through here with you all today is uh, I was working with a student the uh, just literally just like two days ago. Um, and this student, what they were looking for is they were looking for literary criticism on, on uh, Mark Twain's work. So I said, great, you know, there's a lot of different ways we can approach that. But then they had some specific things. Like one of the things that they really, really wanted was a, a book source. Um, so let's take a look at how we might go about finding this kind of thing here. So uh, on my- They wanted a physical book. That was like their preference for this. Book. Right. Okay. Um, that was just exactly their preference on this. And, and we have tons of physical books that would meet their needs for this topic. So the best way to start searching for something through our library is to use our search box here. This is going to take us directly into our search engine. Let me see if I can make my screen a little bit bigger even. And all we need to do is start putting in our topic. So maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in, you know, Mark Twain and literature criticism, because that's exactly what the student needed. And the, um, this is the library homepage, which the URL is scrolling at the bottom. But basically, if you Google search Seminole State Library, it's going to be like the first result. So that might yeah. be one quick way to get there. Or if you search through the Seminole State College website, you'll, you'll find us that way too. Mm -hmm. But this search box here is going to open up our search engine and like let us see all of the things that it found. So when I click the yellow search button there, we're going to see a whole lot of stuff. Uh, I mean, let's see what I found. I, I found like over 900 things that have something to do with Mark Twain and literature criticism. And as we scroll down here, remember the student that I was working with really, really wanted a physical book. But if I'm looking down here, the first couple of things I see, there was a journal and, and an article. Mm, mm, that's journal, not an article. Book. It's not a book. Oh, okay. I did and find it's available book. online. That's not what they wanted. Yeah, exactly. They don't want it online. I did find a book, but what happens here? It says it's available in a couple different places. So when the student came to me and they said, I know I want a book. Well, the first thing that I started to pay attention to is over in this left-hand column, you're going to see something called a resource type. And when you drop down on that little arrow, arrow the, the carrot arrow there, We'll see, ah, so we have some books specifically, and that's what the student was looking for. So when we saw these 900 articles, it wasn't surprising to me that most of them came from articles. There, there's always more articles than there are books. But in this particular case, we knew we needed a book source. So it was great. We could really reduce our decision tree a lot just by selecting this resource right up front. So instead of 900 things, now we were able to get to this where we had, oh, only 192. And I say only 192. That, that's still a lot, right? Still, still too much. But then when we started looking at this, well, these books are still available online. And that's not what the student wanted. They, they wanted a book that they could pick up and hold in their hand and take home with them, right? Mm 
So we can go a little bit deeper. We don't want just books. We want physical books. And if I scroll down again here, I can see, oh, well, availability. One of the things is it's available on the shelf. Well, that's fantastic. We can do that that way. That's one thing we could do. And that will guarantee that everything we find right now should be a physical book on one of our library shelves. And that's tremendous. That gets us part of the way there. Ross, what campus were you at when you were helping that student? Well, that's just it, right? It's like we were here at the Sanford campus, like working on this. But the book that they wanted was actually at the Oviedo campus. Or actually, I think it was at the Altamont campus. I think it was this book right here. Um, because they were specifically writing about Huckleberry Finn. And or, or maybe it was this Oviedo. I can't remember which campus it was at. But you'll see here that this says it's at available at the Altamont campus, and this one's at the Oviedo campus. Well, that's that's great. Uh, but we were at the Sanford campus. So one thing we could have done here is I could have gone down here to where it says location, and I could have selected, oh, well, I only want the books that are at Sanford. And that would only find the books that are here at Sanford, and they would show up exactly like this one, where it says readings on Mark Twain, and it says it's available at Seminole State uh, Sanford Circulation Campus. I didn't mean to click on that. Sorry about that. But this book happened to be at the Oviedo Campus. What do we do? I, I, I mean, one thing we could do, if, if we were at the Sanford Campus here right now, you see how this book has uh, some letters and numbers in those parentheses. That's the book's call number. And if I wanted a physical book on the shelf, that's how I would find the book. It's kind of like it's a dress in a way, right? Which, I, I, which if, if you're unfamiliar with those, it's totally cool. You can mm -hmm. ask someone at the desk to help you find a book. Absolutely. And Ross, like if this student, I don't know, do you remember if the student was like, had a very small time frame in which to obtain the book and do the I, assignment? I, I think they had a little bit of time. Well, so what? Perfect. Because if they didn't have that time, Ross, you would have had to say, look, we need to find something that's on available on shelf at the location we're at, which was SLM mm -hmm. now. And this would have been a perfect example of something that would have been useful. But being that they had a little bit more time mm -hmm. at their disposal. Yeah. So they had a little bit of time and they really wanted to take a look at this book from Oviedo. Now, I don't expect anybody to drive to another campus to pick up a book off the shelf. So what we could do here is if we dug into this book a little bit, I want to see what, what's going on with this book. And if I click on where it says it's available, one of the things I it's going to allow me to do is I can sign in to my library account in this system here. And all I would do is go to this button that says sign in. And you're going to log in using your single sign-on login. And the good news here is that the login information is going to be identical to your college information. You're going to be using, for one, you're going to be using your college email address. And then the second thing, it should be the same as your current Canvas password. So as you change your Canvas password or, uh, you know, as you update it, uh, it will also update your library account. But those two things should always be in sync with each other. There. So when I sign in, one of the th options that I'm going to have now is to get it. And I'm not at the uh, Oviedo campus, but I wanted to get it sent here for that student. So what we could do then is use this request option. You won't see it there unless you're already signed in to this search system. But when we do that, I can just go to request this book and I can say, hey, send it. You can send it anywhere, right? Say, oh, maybe it actually works better at the Heathrow library. But, you know, they wanted it at Sanford. So we could say, hey, send it to Sanford. All of this stuff here, you just have to agree to. And then the pickup date, whatever date that you want it by, you know, you can put it there. But, you, you know, if it, if you put the not needed date as let's say I pick, picked it for today, we wouldn't get to it until tomorrow. And then this request might actually time out. So I always say, if you, if you have a few days, put it a few days out. So that gives our search, uh, our system a little bit of time to be updated and for people to see the request and get the book sent from one campus to another. But you know, it, it takes about 24 hours or so from the time you put in your request to the time we can get it sent to another campus ordinarily, not counting weekends and all. But then when you send that request, it'll it'll put in the, the request in our system and then we'll do the rest of the work. 
You'll get the book sent over to the campus that you want it at. Once we have it in hand, we'll notify you. And then we'll find a way to coordinate that with, with and you. And I feel it. like, isn't it, don't, do you get an email to your school email or was there a spot that's, in that form to put like your, in that form that's, to put your that, own. That's right, Nicole. You're right. Because mm -hmm. since we signed into our, our library account here, it's tied to our, our Seminole State account. So it knows what your college email address is and it will send you a notification. Like, I think it'll even send it when you submit the request and then you'll get it another notification once it's, you know, been processed and then once it arrives you'll get another so it'll keep you up to date the entire time you're, you're waiting on this book too but you can request as much as you want there's really no limitation to it um request as much as you think you're going to use maybe even more than you think you're going to use so you have some choice too because from there we could just go back a few steps go back to our search results and then we could keep requesting books or we could keep examining what was here at Sanford. You know, this book was at Sanford. And if I wanted to find it, we have its address, this call number. And we could just go pick that up off the shelf and take it home with us, whatever campus that book is on. Now, when you found this resource uh, for that student, and by the way, um, we do have a few people watching. So anybody watching the stream, if you are still looking for something, let us know. Yes, I'm still looking for stuff in the comments. Um, so, you know, we could even help you find something right now if you want us to, totally. um, but just go ahead and, um, let us know in the comments in the chat, if you are looking for something, um, did you, when you got found this for the student, but did you have to look at more information about that item to figure out well, if you really did even want to bother looking at the call number and that's, the location? A, that's a fantastic point because Nicole's right. Like. I don't want to just request books willy nilly, hoping that they help me out. I mean, the title says something. It tells it us does. what it is, but. But let's see, because if we dig into this a little bit, if you click on that book's title, it's going to bring us back to this page that we were just on. But if we scroll down a little bit further, and hopefully I'm not giving everybody vertigo by doing that. <laughs> but look away, look away. You're going to start to see this details section. And what the details section is really great for is number one, it's going to give us all of this stuff that we need to make our citations. So this page is really handy for that, but I really, really like to see this description. It, it, I mean, this one's provided by the publisher, so maybe it doesn't really tell me a whole lot, but it, it's re-examining Huckleberry Finn after a hundred years. So maybe there's something I could use there. And what's really, really cool is most books, not all, but at least most will give you this. It's, it's a look at the table of contents of this book. So sometimes you can go through there and then go, is there a chapter on my specific topic? You know, I mean, I, I, I don't even remember exactly what their specific angle with, with researching Huckleberry Finn was, but you know, we, we could learn a little bit about it right here, just from this content section. So before you request something or before you even go through the trouble of finding it on the shelf, I always recommend yeah, reading the description or reading that contents just to see where it's going, to see if it will help your research out. Ross, shiftless, lazy, and dad blasted tired. I hadn't heard that one before. I like that. I'm co-opting that. Really with either. I am dad blasted tired today. <laughs> been a long one. <laughs> All right. Well, um, listen, um, so make sure we didn't, uh, we didn't miss anything you wanted to go over, Ross. But in the meantime, right here real quick, um, while you're just checking on that. Yeah, I think we're good with that particular example. But you see how that all cool. works? Like we were able to find a physical book by using all of those, those filters on the left-hand side of our screen there. They're really powerful. Nice. You know what's missing today? <sighs> Is it the glasses rally? Glasses I rally! I said oh, I tried. Okay, sorry. I meant to do a cringe alert before we were going to do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But I got gla uh, glasses rally up here and, you know, for Jason. Okay. Uh, we did it. We did it this day. Okay. He's, <laughs> he's kind of in charge of us unofficially. <laughs> so when he's not here, you know, like <laughs> we're just fumbling through. All right. So, all right. So um, I'm going to take off your screen share. Rock. Okay. So I had a student the other day and this will illustrate a couple other things about the catalog. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I keep calling it catalog. It's not yeah. a catalog. It's really not anymore. That's like kind of an outdated library term, our, our, our online catalog, because it's really so much more than that. It's, it's a whole search system now. That's why we call it the library search engine. Okay. Totally. So I had a student the other day um, that came up and they needed a book on 
they said, I need a book on nuclear physics. And I was like, okay. And I'm thinking, I know absolutely nothing about nuclear physics, which is common for librarians. Like, we don't really know anything about the subject area at first, but that's our job is to sniff mm -hmm. out where we need to go to find out what the student or faculty needs. So I said, well, is there any like particular, because that's a pretty broad topic. So I said, is there any particular part of uh, nuclear physics? And he said, fusion. And I was like, okay. And I still don't really know what that is, but I'm like, I'm going to search nuclear physics and fusion in the catalog. Ugh. Again, in search, the library search engine. Search engine. Okay. Um, and going back to the search bar that, um, that Ross did display for us a little bit earlier. Okay. So I'm going to click on advanced search. Now, mm. You don't have to use this. I'm going to do it just to show you guys what it looks like. Okay. We're taking the lap and showing you around. Ugh. Wrong screen. <laughs> oh no, it's still not loading. Hmm. <laughs> Ross. You want to try to share mine again? Let's use yeah. the Yeah. Let's use Good this advanced, advanced search, Ross. <laughs> so when you when you go into your advanced search, it's going to give you a lot of options. Um, you were already starting it. I was. You I was. Were. I was searching team. along. Our so team, I, our team, high five across the room. So we were searching nuclear physics and fusion in here. Now we have some choices with these these fields. If I knew that this was the subject I was looking for, I might try that, but. The subject itself can be kind of limiting because you have to be exact with the vocabulary. And and if I'm being truthful with you, I'm pretty bad at coming up with the subject words myself. I mean, I, I have a hard time guessing what they might be. So I, I usually try to work on that later. So in this case, the any field search is probably pretty good. Um, and then we can just try that. We, we know we were looking for nuclear physics and fusion. So let's search to see what we turn up here. Yikes. The 425 eight. results. I thought we found 900 before and that was a lot. But now we're at 8,000. Now also this student, like they weren't, they were like wanted like a broad kind of like 30,000 foot view of the topic. They, they weren't, they were kind of just starting to explore the topic. So they really had to keep it simple articles and like journals journal articles from databases those are going to be uh resources that get really specific and particularly really, really fast and really like intensely like um uh, the language of the discipline mm -hmm. help me i think i'm losing the word yeah no i mean they're uh, going to use a lot of that like really professional terminology and they're going to kind of expect that you know a little bit about the subject and maybe there'll be a time for that for you but like mm -hmm. in the general but this student was like he just wanted a general book so we're definitely looking at books now he said he was open to ebooks which is Ooh. good so if we're looking at books we can still go down to this resource type okay but, so we so can pick talk um, about that Okay, so we're going back to pick your resource type and what was it called? Like, it's not even called ebooks. It's like available online. Available online. That's okay. the thing is if this student mm -hmm. wanted an ebook, well, they're still books, but we he can wanted store both. We oh, okay. But, but here's the thing, Ross, is he told me that he was frustrated because he had already started searching himself a little bit. And I don't know even know where he searched. I didn't ask if he searched in the catalog catalog <laughs> the search engine um but he was like so mad because he's like i can only find old stuff and, historical stuff and he wouldn't be wrong because look at this book here the first one that we saw is from 1992 1900s um, nine, yeah the 1900s now some subjects are cool like that works to go way back but um but not every subject and you know, he was looking for like what's currently going on with fusion, like technology, because technology changes, it advances. Right. So one of the things we could do there, Nicole, is we scroll down here and looked at some more of our, our filters. One of the things that we use a lot here in the library is this creation date thing, because as Nicole was saying, like sometimes 
older information is still relevant. I mean, if you're writing you know, a historical overview of a topic, well, something from 1992 might not be so bad. But if we're talking about like what the current state of, of nuclear fusion is, um, we probably want to stay pretty current, right? So we might even come into this creation date and say, you know, just show me stuff from the last 10 years. So I could say, you know, just show me from 2012 to now. Um, and when we, when we update that, do we still have the thing where like sometimes a book has a future date or like we could have put 2022 you know how sometimes they publish something and say supposedly it's got like a future yeah, yeah it's, date. it's weird but that's not generally, very common generally what it will do and when it when it puts that range in there is it's gonna find the oldest result and the newest result and it'll tell you like between there that's what it found so when it said 1963 to 2021 i suspect that's the oldest source it found and then the newest one um but if we're looking at this well it, it makes sense to me too almost all of these more recent books are ebooks they're available online they're also en français yeah, some of them are. Oh, but here's a book from 2014. <laughs> and then, oh, here's another book from 2021, but it's an encyclopedia. Maybe that's not, but it's some somewhere in there, they're talking about, you know, nuclear you know, fusion. But we're in the right area there. Okay. Now, um, another, we'll go ahead and disclose a library world secret at this time groundbreaking earth shattering um we don't we don't buy as many books in print as we used to not yeah. nearly but we buy a lot of ebooks a lot of electronic available online books and that came into play here because hey if he wants something new odds are we have more available online because we order more online materials now than we used to so that was like perfect. I was like, okay, well, I'm glad he's good for the online because we're going to need that. We're going to need to go into that area for new mm -hmm. stuff. Okay. Now, can you go back? Okay. Let's say, all right, you've got, we looked at a few things. Um, I will tell you, like when I was trying to find like what I felt like was a, the perfect thing for him to start with. Okay. I was like, I, I'm going to do some of our searching with the quotations because I felt oh, like I was right. getting weird results. Like at one point I even got a result for like fusion cooking. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Cause no, he's not in the culinary program. He, he's looking for nuclear physics. So um, if you have a brief phrase, usually I would say maybe two, maybe three words. And in that phrase that you're trying to search are uh, words that could connect to other topics or be included separate of the other word like there's nuclear stuff that's not part of physics right and there's physics that's not nuclear absolutely so when they were like alone and didn't have quotation marks hugging them the catalog search engine the those search words are engine very interchangeable <laughs> was pulling up everything that said nuclear and everything that said physics and everything that said nuclear physics so now Ross put quotations hugging yeah. those words and they're searching just the phrase. Let's see how that changes our results here. So if we scroll down now, okay, it actually dropped it a lot. What did we have? 8,000 on our first try? And now we're down 3, to like 4,000. Like, so those little things can make a big difference when, when you're searching through there. Um, so as you're as you're developing your topic and developing your search, think about that because the the order of the words doesn't necessarily matter so much unless you need those words together, and then you have to put them in the quotation marks to keep them together. Otherwise, the search system might interpret them a little differently. Okay. Now, Ross, let me know if you mm -hmm. think there's anything else, any of these basic, um, you know, that left-handed menu which we've used a lot today. Anything basic on there for once again, well, remember, this is like a start your engines. We're yeah. not getting to it. Okay. Make let's, sure we haven't missed anything. That let's we take this one out. for a second here, because let's say this student hadn't told us that they were interested in nuclear phys physics here. Uh, this happens a lot. I will have a student come to me and they say, oh, my topic is about fusion, right? So if you do a search in here for fusion, we're going to find a lot of stuff. 
I mean, way more than we saw before. Like 243,000 things. Ugh. But the thing about that is, is fusion could mean a lot of different things. Like, I mean... Fusion you know, cooking. Fusion cooking. Jazz um, fusion. Music. Oh, jazz fusion. Yeah, you know, I mean, maybe it's like the physical mm. process of fusing something together in engineering or construction. Like... So one thing you can do if you're faced with this with 240,000 things is maybe we can try to narrow that a little bit by looking at this subject area down here. Because you're going to see when we put infusion, it goes all over the place. I mean, are we talking about animals? Not really. And like life sciences? Not exactly. But then we start to get in here like, oh, molecular biology? Maybe that's closer to what we're looking for. Or, you know, applied by, you can see there's a lot of different categories this stuff could fall into. I'm not an expert in this topic by any stretch, so I'm not exactly mm -hmm. sure where I might even start. But this is something that you, maybe you have a little bit of insight into this topic. You know, maybe did some background reading on it already. You I mean, you're in the class that you're doing the assignment for, so probably you would know like, more than us really off the bat. Like there, that's not something I would have thought of. There's a category for nuclear weapons which i guess could potentially still be nuclear physics but you know that will drill down even more, you know closer to what your goal is if you can find something in this subject area it can be really helpful i mean because you can see right here it's, there's still eighteen thousand things that have to do with something with fundamental and applied biological sciences and psychology that's still a lot but eighteen thousand is still way better than two hundred forty three thousand when you're when you're you know trying to navigate through all of this so that was the only other thing that I really saw on there that might be worth your time. Okay. And yeah, I think that's it. And and I don't, just because like we had talked about this before um, and I want to point it out, I don't sure if it helps anybody, please chat if this, uh, if this helps you. So, okay. A lot of this terminology of these things that we're telling you to look at, you're like, okay, that makes sense when you see us display it and talk about it. But um, you know, some of it's still jargony. Okay, jargon is a word. I don't know if jargony is, but it's like the language that is used by a profession. And so in this case, it's mm -hmm. library and information science. So like subject heading, what is that really? And Ross just displayed it and kind of showed in action of like the again. process. Okay. And I always use the analogy like, okay, hashtags. Yes, they are. They're like passe they're 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 not cool anymore they're not used a lot anymore is my understanding from my 12 year old daughter who also texted me at half an hour ago and asked do i want a free kitten <laughs> like <laughs> i didn't even answer that okay so um they're not cool but we know what they are because most of our students if they don't use them anymore because they're too cool for that which i don't blame you um hashtags are put on like photos and instagram i know ross uses instagram so you can speak mm -hmm. to this if you need to expound Hashtags are put on a post on Instagram to direct people to post about a certain event. Um, it could be even like, I know companies still use like, Hey, post on like red nose day, hashtag red nose day mm -hmm. and hashtag Walgreens and X, Y, Z. So uh, the subject heading is like the top selling, the top tier element of that, of that book article, whatever. Like if there's a subject heading, can you for um, what are we looking for? Like just in that in that list, it's a it's cool. Um, I just want to look at one that's like recombinant fusion proteins dash metabolism. The 19,000 19, books or items that have that tag, that hashtag subject tag. Ah, whatever. That's one of the top. They're gonna talk a lot about that. OK, they're going to also talk about a hundred bajillion other things, but that is one of the top things. They just put that hashtag out there like hashtag. If you want recombinant fusion protein metabolism, come here. OK, if you want to know about that, look at this picture. Coachella 2022. This is a picture from there. There's a lot of other stuff that happened in the picture, a lot of other stuff behind the story. But, you know, that hashtag Coachella 2022, that's it. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. Is Coachella still a thing? I just like I'm trying believe to believe it is. I believe okay. it is. Um, but anyway, I don't know if that helps because I know people are like, well, I put in a keyword, why don't I need to look at the subject headings? Like, I don't get it. It's just like, get more, gets more and more complicated, but maybe that helps. Okay. So, um, yeah. And of course there's always a librarian to help you 
We have so many different ways that you can get in touch with us. Here is we close this. <laughs> oh, okay. The chat. Oh, oh yeah. Fun. It's going to pop up at you. It's unrelenting. Yes. Um, we also have research appointments, which we even have like a little, I'm going to pop this up in here. This little, Absolutely. um, yeah, the uh, tiny URL. So if you go to our library web homepage that we all, we started from at the top of this program to go through these examples with you and take our lap around the lap, mm -hmm. few laps, we went a couple laps, um, slow, they were slow around the catalog. I did it again, Ross. It works. It works. <laughs> yeah, right here. You, there's our research assistant. If you ever want to make appointments with us, um, you can schedule stuff right through here. Here's our research appointments link. Um, you can schedule with any one of our librarians. You pick your campus. You, we can even do them online. Uh, it's asking if we need help through our chat again. It, it, yeah. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's a lot of ways to get in touch with us. All right. And thank you to our Seminole State family, which I did realize um, actually like two minutes into the broadcast, I was like, oh, we didn't introduce ourselves. Oh, I'm yeah, Nicole from the library. And I, and I am Ross from the library as well. And this has been another installment of the Research Rally series. Thank you to our Seminole State family for joining us. And we will see you on the next one. Right, Ross? Right. Uh, vroom! Cue outro! Oh.